All right, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Living the Dream podcast. Today on the show, we have Michael Stowicki, who is an author and business coach. Michael, how you doing? And tell us how to really pronounce your name. Well, in Polish, we tell it uh, Michał Stawicki. And uh, I'm just fine. Thank you for inviting me. It's I'm excited about this. Of course. No, we're excited to have you. And we like to jump right in. So if you could start with telling us a little bit about yourself and what you like to do for fun, that'd be great. Well, 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 uh, a little about myself. Come on, I can speak about myself all day long. But, well, I'm an author. I publish self-published books. Uh, husband, uh, father, I have three kids. They are almost grown-ups. My youngest is 16. I'm also a business coach, which I started practicing this year. And, uh, and I have book advertising business as well. I quit my day job two months ago at the end of august uh what do i do for fun i love to read mm. Mm. what is uh was one of your actually we'll get to that question later so i'm not going to ask it now so you told us you have a book advertising business and that you're a business coach tell us what a day in your life looks like currently well i woke up early around 6 a.m uh and if I'm lucky, everybody is of the home, both my uh, daughter and my son, and also my wife took her day job, which is started because she was bored out of her mind uh, sitting at home. Gotcha. Uh, so I, I do my morning ritual. I exercise, read, pray, meditate, uh, listen to a podcast, stretch myself, and then and only then I'm starting the work day. Uh, so I like to plan my day for like 15 minutes. What's on the agenda? At 8 a.m. I have an accountability call uh, with my accountability partner. We share what we are going to do this day. And then I'm just diving into my day, uh, whatever it is, uh, managing my team, doing uh, some stuff for my Customers, I usually have a call or two because I'm in a few masterminds and I have my coaching business running. And uh, I'm wrapping my day around 4 or 5 p.m. And the luxury of working from home and my card and rip, like every few hours, I need an app. So either I drink a strong coffee or I get those 10, 15 minute nap. So I can uh, blaze through through the day. So around uh, 5 p.m., everybody is going back from work uh, and school. And so I'm stopping my work and hanging out in the evening with my family. Uh, and I try to get to bed before 11 p.m., which is not always the case. I got you. I got you. Okay. I love it. I love it. Well, tell us a bit more about your motivation. What really gets you up and keeps you going every day? Uh, ah, that's that's a very good question. Like uh, every day, I repeat. It's part of my uh, morning ritual. I repeat my personal mission statement, which actually encompasses how I want to be at the end of my life. Like. Uh, which things I want to achieve, what kind of person I want to be. And this is my true motivation. Every other piece of motivation, like how to uh, make it till the next mortgage or uh, how to plan the next vacation is just, you know, small pieces of this big picture. I love it. I love it. So the person that you want to become is your most motivating factor. Amen. I love it. There we go. Well, let's jump into your dreams and goals, man. Tell us about your vision for your life and your companies. Yeah. So right now, my long term, uh, sorry, short term vision is really to do more coaching because I love doing it. It, it stretch me, stretches me very, very much. And I, I have grown a lot since a year ago. I started learning how to coach and then practicing it. Like I had a session several hours ago and even though i was serving my uh, client i got a lot from it yeah uh, 
Yeah, I also have business to grow. So uh, I have similar uh, struggles like my uh, customers. Uh, so short term, this is it uh, because it doesn't take so much time like in the other kind of businesses. And also it can provide uh, stable income and then I can be free to do whatever else. And by whatever else, I mean like, I have 19 books out there, but I don't have time to promote them properly. Uh, and and I feel like I'm doing injustice to all this work uh, I've done. Uh, and there is stuff like my audiobook narrator, he narrated my book and died in the next two weeks. Like that was the probably the last work he ever done on this realm. And now I feel like, come on this means something and i should do it more but right now i'm chasing money so i don't have time for that kind of projects i don't have time to promote my books properly and uh, and i don't have time really to grow my business properly because i want to it to to be like um, not exactly totally independent entity but i want to be a ceo uh, the vision caster not the guy who is recording uh, book pages reviews uh, for customers or telling them uh, what the uh, numbers in the advertising dashboard mean for for their campaigns like i can train others to do that but it's still i'm in this hamster wheel so i want to like i got out of the corporate hamster wheel and that's fine and good uh, I love to be my own boss, but uh, I also want to put more order into my life. So I don't need to chase money. I don't need to chase uh, customers. I just serve. Mm. I love it. I love it. So right on the horizon is do more coaching because you love it. And it provides some freedom on the financial side. A um, little bit of an easier business to scale. Um, and then just kind of get to that point where you are financially free. You have the systems in place so that you can spend more time serving instead of chasing. Amen. There we go. Any other dreams or goals that you want to talk about? Other than that, uh, well, whatever uh, is in my personal mission assignment, yes. Yeah, so I really want to, uh, at the end of my life, be at peace, okay, uh, to regret the things I did not the things I haven't done and and uh, also to be like a role model for my kids for my friends uh, because this is important for me yeah I don't want to hear from the other side oh come on I was so disappointed with Michal because he did this or that uh, so that's the the human part of it and also like when I, it comes to fin financial freedom, which is really something I never yet experienced. Yeah, I'm uh, financially well, but well, I still have mortgage and 40 years or something. So uh, it's not freedom. I, I never experienced that. And I'm so curious how it tastes. That's one thing. And I have friends all over the world, which I wa want to visit. Yeah. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. So what's that? What's that number? Is it a is it a monthly number that you need to reach? Is it a lump sum amount that you need to reach? Uh, yeah, I would say, first of all, get rid of my mortgage because this is debt and, you know, the lender is lender borrower is a slave. Yeah. Yeah. So no, I don't want that. That's number one and big uh, chunk of, of cash really to to get my hands on. Uh, and then, yes, I'm actually on the verge of this number, like $6,000 is enough to uh, prosper in, in my scenario and to pay my team and to do not have or day-to-day -day worries yeah and i'm don't even thinking about things like retirement and uh, this golden 
egg found and so on. Nope, nope. Just, you know, day to day. Uh, and then it's really freedom because if I'm not dependent on anything, uh, then I can do things for free, for example, eh? free coaching, or just I know a lot of struggling self-publishers who have no clue how to advertise books, but it's really time consuming. So it's not that easy to, to help them. Yeah. So, uh, but then I can, I could do that. Uh, those kind of things like a referral from a friend. Okay. I will help you. No problem. Yeah. Yeah. I feel that. I feel that. Well, awesome. So it's like kind of a lump sum for your mortgage and then that $6,000 a month range. And then, uh, to kind of be at that financial peace of mind and then probably a little more than that to like plan for retirement and all that good stuff. Um, cool, man. Well, I'm trying to see what would, um, if you were to get to 12,000 a month in a year, what actions would you have to take to make sure you did not fail? And that's a very good question. 12,000. I guess I need to prioritize coaching because this is the mm, part of my business which has the huge, the biggest uh, opportunity to grow and to grow quickly. Yeah, I, I have 19 books out there and any of them can become a bestseller tomorrow, but well, for the last decade, none of them uh, did that. So it's not uh, that likely. And so one thing, prioritize coaching. And then, yeah, uh, what really comes to my mind is to make it um, dependent on, on my efforts. Yeah. So create a system like a prospecting system which i have zero right now uh, all the clients i'm getting are from referrals uh, but uh, then if i had a system which okay i have uh, 20 calls book five clients uh, a month uh, so i know what are the actions i need to to take to have the output i want to have yeah, that's, that's the way to go because I'm really good at those small repetitive actions. Uh, but yeah, exactly. Vision casting and visioning, building this system, like experimenting, this is all uh, the stuff. I'm not so good at it. I got you. Okay, okay. Well, we're going to run through some questions that I hope will help you with that. And then I want to tell you about somebody who I also think might be able to help you a lot. You've probably heard of them, but if you haven't, I would love to share them with you. The first question is, what are the top one to two skills that you need to develop right now to make your dream life come true? Hit that financial freedom to do more coaching. Mm -hmm. Skills. Uh, yeah, the skill of reaching out to people. Like, uh, I can do this right now, but uh, it like I feel so much resistance while, while doing it and it doesn't have to be that way because I have something valuable to offer and uh, and I love connecting in the end uh, there is always something the other person can uh, have for me and vice versa I love to connect people who I barely know but I know they are in the same space and so on so shouldn't be such a problem which it is right now for me i got you reaching out to people and so i heard you talking about connecting people is it reaching out to people to connect them reaching out to people to get them into your coaching business reaching out to people for both reasons reaching out to people for a completely different reason what is the purpose behind the reaching out yeah so uh there may be like actually I feel like I do so much more. And of course, this is coaching, seriously, because asking questions uh, uh, and then me getting the answers out of myself, this is coaching and this works so great. Uh, so it is good for everything for me, I would say, like 
yeah, getting uh, coaching clients, but also letting the world know that uh, I'm a coach because this is how it works. If I'm getting uh, clients from referrals, I need uh, more people to know about me. And the same case is with my books. As I said, uh, yeah, I'm barely marketing them. I should do more such interviews, talk about my books and uh, and uh, get those readers who haven't heard of me at all, but then I'm showing up on some podcasts and and to them, they, they type my name into Google and, and find my book. So uh, this is really good for everything. And I, as I said, it, it's really like this, this call we have right now. It's feeding my soul. I love doing such things. Yeah. It's yeah. the reaching out part, which really tires me. But when I'm one-on-one -on -one with someone, like this is the best time of my day. I love it. I love it. Very nice. Very nice. So reaching out to people. And so which type of reaching out would be the highest impact for your current goals? Would it be the one to get more clients, to let the world know you're a coach, or to do more interviews? Yeah, the true is I don't know. So I should try to um, scale up everything and have a look. Like I'm doing podcast interviews for, I've been doing them for like half a year. And cannot honestly say there is a much of a difference in all of my businesses, but I still love doing it. And I think like how many of them is dozen, maybe 20 interviews. It's not really enough to tell if that makes a difference or not. Yeah. So uh, that's why I'm, I'm saying I need to do all kinds of things and measure then I will know, okay, which has the most impact. Uh, by the way, the, my one of my top Gallup talents is context. So I look into the past to figure out the future. And this is exactly what I uh, fell into by, by default. You ask me a question, then I'm thinking, hey, I don't know. So I need to try this, this, this. So I will know because then I will look into the past and figure it out. Yeah, yeah, I gotcha. Well, there we go. So we know the one or two skills you need. It's really reaching out to people, whether that be to get coaching clients, to let the world know you're a coach or to do more interviews. So our next question is, what are the highest impact daily actions that are going to tick the needle forward towards your dreams and goals? And again, I'm not sure. Uh, another talent of mine is strategy and I can feel it uh, so maybe I should strategize more because right now I'm really diving into my days and then oh like I live day by day uh, and there is no strategy uh, I have a feeling that yeah, I, I have a connection, uh, a former coach who is very good at prospecting on LinkedIn and she can teach me this. And if I could do that, that would be like hmm, reaching out, getting more clients and, you know, more connections uh, on LinkedIn uh, never can hurt then people are usually offering something or, you know, get to know me better. And yeah, so there is a lot potential in that. And like right now I'm feeling like I'm talking myself into it. <laughs> it's kind of what it sounds like. <laughs> uh, awesome. So prospecting on LinkedIn, you think is the daily action that's really going to take. Yeah. Down. Yeah. I love it. I love it. And what character trait? do you most need to develop right now to make your dream life come true? Oh, that's unexpected. Yeah, I, I read that uh, <laughs> question eh, in a questionnaire before the podcast. Didn't even uh, really reflect that deep on it. But right now I think it's a compassion for myself because I'm so impatient with myself. I have a lot of patience 
for my customers, uh, for my kids and so on. But for myself, not so. And uh, yeah, everything takes time. Yeah. And in the end, it is what I'm teaching uh, my readers and my coaches. Well, if you are beating yourself, come on. There is no favor you are doing anyone in the world because actually I am the only person who can get me out of the situation, no one else. So beating me doesn't improve the situation at all. Yeah, yeah, no, I got that. Uh, Will Smith, I think Will Smith said this. He was like, the whole world is trying to beat you up, trying to put you down. And you're going to kick yourself in the balls? Like, (laughs) he talks about just don't... um, kind of hamstring yourself don't cripple yourself with the words that you say to yourself and i struggle with that just like everybody on the planet does like we all have to go through that journey of like kind of killing our ego and getting our thoughts under control and um not even under control but just to the point where we observe them and don't tie our identity to them if that makes sense so i'm right there with you man i'm right there with you well awesome if there were one or two people that you can meet right now. And this could be a specific person or a type of person. And they'd really help you take that next step towards your dreams and goals. Who would they be and how would they do it? So that's definitely uh, Natalia with her prospecting. Uh, Yeah. Now I feel like I need to reach out to her. (laughs) Did you say Natalie? Natalia. She's Spanish, so... Gotcha, gotcha, uh, gotcha. For LinkedIn prospecting. Yep, yep. And, well, I guess anybody with a big audience who is growth-oriented and can really, you know, um, magnify my message. Yeah, so I don't have to... uh, do these small daily actions for so so long because I kind of get a feeling I did my dues like I've been doing it for a decade and quite uh, well of course my own story doesn't amaze me okay that's my story come on uh, I know it I lived it but I'm I'm getting on podcasts and people are like whoa you you wrote 19 books you quit your day job and so on and so on so like I have something to offer and uh, also I have like thousand positive reviews of uh, all of my books. So they are doing their things, changing people's lives. Uh, I have stories from my readers. Uh, so just this, you know, as one breakthrough, which will elevate me to the next level, not necessarily um, happily ever after, but just to the next level. Yeah. There we this, go. The, what you said, this peace of mind level. Mm. I love it. Well, awesome. My uh, my guy who I was going to tell you about is Alex Hormozy. Have you ever heard of him? Yeah, I read his uh, 100 million offer. Yeah, do you ever watch his YouTube videos? Uh, I'm not a video watcher. Like I hate learning from... Uh, videos but i've heard about his podcast so maybe i should check it out yeah you should check out his podcast you should check out the podcast if you are familiar with lewis house and the school of greatness um alex hormozy i think has been on the show two or three times you should listen to all three of those interviews because one thing he talks about so he's like he's literally worth like a hundred million dollars which is obnoxiously wealthy right And he talks about the lower levels of the entrepreneurial game. Like they're very simple and they are simple. doesn't mean they're easy, (laughs) but he's like, I promise you, if you reach out, he's like from zero to a hundred thousand, the way to get there is one client, one avatar, one product. And then that's really from zero to a million, zero to a hundred is sell something to somebody zero to a million is one client, one product, one avatar. And then like one to three, you have to start hiring some people three to 10. You have to start hiring some key leadership people. And then to scale past 10 million, it's like, um, you really have to replace yourself on the leadership team and become more of an owner, I think is what he says. But I'm really focused on the zero to a hundred because that's where I am right now. (laughs) And so he's like, 
the the one thing he says, he's like, I promise you, if you reach out to a hundred people a day, every day for the next ninety days, you will have more than enough leads for your business. And he's like, and just say anything. Like, just tell them that you offer something and just reach out to those 100 people a day. And he's like, but a lot of people don't do this. Like, people will be like, hey, Alex, I've been doing the 100 reach outs. And he's like, for three weeks. And then he'll be like, oh, how many messages have you sent? And they'll be like, 500. He's like, that's funny because you're supposed to have sent 2,100, but you sent 500. And so it's just uh, staying consistent with that 100 messages every day for the next 90 days. So you got to send out what 9,000 messages to people. And it's like, just have it be the first thing that you do. And I've kept telling myself that I'm going to do it. And to this day, I haven't been consistent with it because I feel like I've had so many things up in the air that I'm like, Oh, I'll just shoot out a hundred messages for every single thing. But really what I need to do is just pick one send a hundred messages every day for a year, for two years, for three years. And, um, you know, if you send a hundred messages every day for three years and you're not successful, it's like your offer probably sucks, you know? <laughs> um, so Alex Ormosi just consistently calls me out and I just wanted to put you on to his podcast because the man has so much entrepreneurial wisdom. But... Okay. So now I have a piece of advice for you. Uh, don't start from 100, start from 10. Start from what is doable in your mind. Yeah. Uh, scaling up is easy. Like starting uh, is hard. Uh, this Brian Tracy quoted some huge research about entrepreneurship. Like they, they research thousands and thousands of businesses and trying to figure out the success factor. What is it? And in the end, they, they concluded, okay, they started and kept going that's it that's it so if you want to send those messages start start from 10 start from anywhere keep doing it it will grow don't wait forever like me and prospecting <laughs> no yeah i got you i got you for sure i think that's part of my um having compassion for myself like i think i read the 10x rule by grant cardone a year and a half ago and i agree with the concept wholeheartedly but i think what a lot of people miss about that book is that when he says 10x your action 10x your mindset he's talking about bringing it to the now and if you are taking zero action like taking one of said action is way more than 10x and then when you're taking one of said infinity exactly exactly and so he's like what can you do right now to start that 10x action start that 10x mindset and if you're doing nothing doing something is like infinite X. And then you can start 10 Xing from there once you've done something consistently, you know? And so that's where I need to have a bit more compassion for myself. Cause I always jump to like, right out of college, I jumped in as a realtor and I was like, I'm going to help a hundred people buy or sell a home this year. And it was like, um, I didn't have runway for, um, months and months of like not getting commission and most realtors don't sell a house in their first year and i didn't have the skills i didn't have the mentors i was like not setting myself up for success and then i was angry with myself for not being successful and so it was just a like kind of negative vicious cycle and so i've been learning the compassion for myself of like um yeah it's uh it, it's okay to start with 10 it's okay to start with one send one dm a day and you'll be better off than if you sent zero you know um, and don't stay there. You don't have to stay there. But if you send one a day for two weeks, then jump to two a day and then just start doubling every two weeks. And eventually by the end of the year, you'll be at your hundred a day or whatever. And um, it'll just be, you'll probably have closed some sales too from sending the one, two, four or eight a day that you were sending. So um, exciting stuff, exciting stuff. Now it seems for me like you talk yourself into something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. Well, awesome. This has been a, a really great conversation, but we still got a lot of questions to go through. So now we're going to jump into our thriving three. And the first question is, what's your favorite book, movie, or podcast? Pick one. Podcast. Brian Buffini. Uh, oh, yeah. What's it, Brian what is called right now? The Good Life, I think. Yeah. Um, that's a good one. Brian Buffini, he's a good guy. Oh, I like yeah. this show too. It's so it's so wholesome. Like I think he comes from a realtor's background, but it's so just self improvement. You know, I, it's just a good podcast. And what is one way you like to take care of yourself? Yeah, I think this self compassion is a very good start because I'm taking care of myself like 
out of duty a, a lot these exercises and my personal mission segment and so on uh, everything i do is just okay so to be in the optimal state but uh yeah compassion is like this magic uh, ingredient so it actually works well not just is pushed yeah yeah i love it and what is one Post. action step you can take right now or continue to take if you're already doing it too link up with natalie and learn some linkedin prospecting or get with somebody who has a big audience that's growth oriented and can magnify your message yeah uh, it's easy to get hold on natalie i just need to send this matches set up the meeting and uh, let the ball rolling yeah there we go there we go well awesome now we got our final series of questions and i can't remember if i've put these on for yet or put them on the um, list of disclosed questions yet but these get a little personal you don't have to answer them if you don't want to um i say that disclaimer because they do get a little personal the first question is, what is one limiting belief that continues to pop up in your life, if any? Oh, there are hard to really uh, pinpoint. Yeah, there are beliefs. They are uh, like part of, of the landscape for me. But recently, because I'm working with coaches as well, uh, it's this one thing I'm finding that uh, like I'm just too tired. I can I cannot do it anymore. Like this is kind of like this is really this piece of self-talk which appears when I start to procrastinate, start to delay, start to turn into other things. Uh, so yeah, this is it. And because it's not really true. I've been doing it for a decade and much more intensively in the past. Uh, yeah, I need some rest from time to time, but uh, I'm not going to kill myself with work if I will apply myself a bit more. Yeah, yeah, I gotcha. So the limiting belief is that I'm too tired, I can't do it anymore. Mm -hmm. And where do you think that comes from? Well, it's, it exactly comes from uh, a decade of uh, hard work. That's one. And I had plenty of, uh, you know, entrepreneurship, unexpected things happening. Uh, like Amazon changed something in the algorithm. I lost half of my business or I went through the depression period or I had spiritual darkness period or family drama with kids and so on. So every all the time this is life life is a, a struggle because this is by struggle we grow and get stronger um and also i think when we talk about this like this lack of self-compassion adds to that because then everything is harder mm -hmm. i'm putting another uh, white on, on my shoulders yeah yeah no i feel that and where do you think that lack of self-compassion comes from like did it start in adulthood was it before that yeah it it's been always with me i'm working on it uh yeah actually i made quite a nice progress because now it's in my consciousness yeah i know about this it's not anymore you know playing in the dark and not knowing what what gets me down um uh, so yeah he's been with me for the whole life and it's a thing i need to learn to live it or overcome yeah yeah for sure and do you have any actions um that reinforce the limiting belief of i'm too tired i can't do it anymore and this is like you have the thought you have the feelings and then you act based on those mm -hmm. feelings. that's what I yeah think. with this is actually funny because it it is like my mechanism to stop me doing something yeah so uh, whenever i procrastinate it's like uh, the manifestation of that attitude yeah yeah procrastination is something that a lot oh, of and also also this uh, and it applies to entrepreneurs i coach 
this busyness. Okay, I will do this, 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 and this because this all, those are the things that are easy that I can take, and that way I will avoid those harder things like reaching out to people. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That um, what is it? <sighs> busyness but not effectiveness? Or mm -hmm. yeah, for sure. That is um. One of the first things, one of the first pieces of advice I feel like a lot of entrepreneurs get is like revenue generating activities or something like that. And that typically tends to be like the harder things that are uncomfortable because that's what sets a lot of entrepreneurs aside from other people. So it's only natural that they're uncomfortable. Um, but yeah, that busyness over effectiveness or productivity is like, for sure, I feel that. And if you were to change that limiting belief, of I'm too tired, I can't do it anymore, into an abundant phrase that really speaks to your heart. What would that phrase be? I'm here to serve. Mm. I love that. So instead of a focus on kind of where your energy levels are at or your limitations, you focus on the people you're here to serve. Yep. I got gotcha. you. I love it. I love it. And when that limiting belief starts to take over, what thoughts or actions do you resort to in order to take back control and refocus yourself on abundance? Yeah, it's uh, like always the hardest thing is to uh, don't just go into this loop of a habit. Okay, I'm too tired, so then I do something or don't do something. But actually be conscious of it so I can step in and do something else. Hmm. Yeah, I think what I need to do, and let's see how it will work for me, uh, uh, is to, to slow down. Like, because it, it really, when I just don't like jump into those tasks, which are of course necessary, but do I need to re uh, record this this book page review right now or can it wait for another day because I have more uh, important things like reaching out to people uh, so yeah just taking time to to absorb this this belief and uh, don't react but sit reflect this is who i am i am a, a thinker i am a slow person okay let's go with it instead of diving right into busy action oh let's do it. let's think about this what's what's the most important thing and then it will create a space between this this poking of my subconscious oh no it's just too much and whatever it wants to achieve which most of the time is Okay, turn on some funny video. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got you. I got you. Slowing down. There we go. There we go. And I, we got one last question for you. And I want to frame this next question. So Alex Hormozzi, who I'm a big fan of, said that the difference between manipulation and help is intent. And I think his point here is that in both scenarios, you're influencing people. But manipulation is about getting somebody to do something that you want them to do, while help is about seeking to understand what somebody else wants and then helping them get to where they want to go. Now, there's a common saying that you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. And I actually found out from Dr. Alan Laika, who was a guest on the show, that you can make a horse drink. You just have to salt its oats. Now, I want you to think about a person with a really fixed mindset not willing to accept help, not willing to accept change, and they hate their life. How can we, you and I, create an environment to salt their oats and help them change their life? Uh, this is hard. Uh, for me, I'm introvert. Uh, and also, like, my phil personal philosophy is we can only salt uh the, those other people with our own example so this is what i'm trying to do my whole life uh, to be the change i want to see in the world um, 
kind of it's working because I am getting this feedback. Uh, like I was on a couple of Polish podcasts and the, the response to that was just enormous how people reacted to my story and to the things I shared about habits and, and changing their lives. And it comes back to compassion uh, team uh, because uh, then I can be this better person, this role model. Like the simplest thing uh, we can do for ourselves to, to change our mood is gratitude. Uh, and there are research about that. Yeah? If, if you are more grateful, more positive, your, uh, your family, your friends will become because they will rub it off from you. So, and I know that gratitude is really, I know it for sure, like it's within me. So that's the daily action I need to do to be more positive, to be more compassionate, focus more on gratitude. I love it. I love it. There we go. That was a great answer. Well, awesome. Is there anything else that you want to chat about before we sign off? That's all we have for you. That was amazing. Great show. And I think you are helping a lot of entrepreneurs with, with this work. Thank you, team. Of course. Yeah, I'm happy to do it. And thank you for coming on the show. And thank you guys for listening. If you guys loved what he had to say, make sure to hit him up. All the ways to do so will be down in the show notes. I'm sure we'll have his website on there, his social media on there, especially his LinkedIn, because I'm sure it will be optimized. And he might be reaching out to you himself. <laughs> um, thank you guys for watching. We will see you on the next one. And on that note, we're out.